Hi and thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to work on the turret, the second part of the model. I guess the first initial model that we're going to do and then we're going to start playing around with it in Unity. Before we do that, what I'd like to be able to do is be able to get a reference to the original base, turret base, in my um, in my Blender file here. Now of course I could just use the same Blender file to to, uh, and put all the assets in, in one place. But what is quite good sometimes is perhaps to work on them separately and to link them uh, together. So this is a good a good idea if you want to kind of reduce space. I mean, obviously that that turret isn't a huge amount of polys or memory. But if you had a lot, lot of objects in a scene and you want to do something with them, you have the ability to link uh, objects from other files. So let's do that right now. So let's just delete the default cube anyway. And that's what we'll do is we'll just click on File, Link. I'd imagine I've probably got a link to it already. So let's take it from the very, very top. Let's go to my Blender folder and let's open my turret base 4 that I created from the previous, there it is, <laughs> uh, from, the, from the previous tutorial. And we'll go to Objects and Turret Base. Okay, and there it is. Look, and if we just click on uh, Viewport Shading, you can see it's boarded in. And this is really good. So we can, literally, that is just a link to the original file. So if we change the original turret base at all, it will be reflected the next time we open in here. So that's kind of cool, right? You can, it means you can have a link to one reference to that object and you can be sure that uh, it won't change. Obviously, if you do change it, you might find that you need to move things around <clears throat> to compensate for it. But at least it's, uh, you know, you're not, you're not you know, duplicating things multiple times and having to edit them multiple times. Now, there is one thing about this is at the moment, I can't actually, I don't have you, um, a quickly strict screencast keys on you're probably saying as on but not doing it there we go so at the moment so if I try and grab it it's not even letting me it's not letting me scale it or rotate it it's not letting me do anything with it I certainly can't edit it I'm pressing tab nothing's going on and actually we don't really care right now uh, because it's exactly where we want it right in the middle for our reference but if we did want to move it about what you need to do is you just need to uh, click on right click on the turret base over here and then ID data make local all right, and then what that'll then allow you to do is allow you to scale it, rotate it as usual, and grab it. What you still can't do is you can't edit it. Okay, so so it's still linked to the original file, um, which is great news. So this is this is kind of like a good halfway house. If you wanted to to put it somewhere, rotate it perhaps. Well, I mean, we don't need to in this example. We're just using it as a reference to make sure that we size everything correctly. All right, so let's get cracking with our turret. Now the idea of my turret is it's going to be a cylindrical turret with a with a gun poking out and maybe some bits at the side just to kind of make it look a little bit sci-fi. Now the reason I've been a couple of days doing this is I haven't managed to find a decent colour to, to colourise this with. So I've been playing around with Adobe's colour wheel and I've got some ideas that potentially we could use maybe a dark purple for it but let's see how we go. Uh, I'm learning as I go as well so I'd love to see your efforts and, and send me what you managed to create. Maybe you can do a damn sight better job than me. I'm not massively worried about the colouring right now because ultimately we're just creating a game. I did want it to look good but if it doesn't look that great then we can always go back and change it later on can't we? So what I'm, my plan is to do this is to have a, a kind of a, a sort of a cylindrical stand that the turret will sit in. The, the stand will look the same colour as this, and the idea being that that won't rotate, but the turret above it will. It'll spin around. So if that's not quite clear right now, let's just let's crack on. We'll do sh Shift A, and we will add a, a mesh. And we'll add a cylinder. Okay, and let's just go to top view and scale it down so it's inside there. And then we'll just grab it on the Z, pull it up. It's much ah, it's also too many vertices. So let's do that again. A number of times I do that. Ma mesh cylinder, and also actually just for fun. Let's change that. Well, let's change it to 16, and also let's remove the uh, the caps. Okay, we, so so we don't forget to take the one out of the bottom. All right, so that's a bit better. 16 is fine. And let's go back to here. Um, Why well, can't I see it? Let's grab it there. It said, "It's curious, isn't it? Why doesn't it let me see it? It is working there, isn't it?" Um, why are you being such a monkey on me? Maybe it's because the cap's not there anymore. Maybe it's uh, being, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it's, let's just try that. Let's just go and make a face. I thought it still would see the edges. Now if I go to the top, yeah, okay. <sighs> I'll remove that in a minute. <laughs> okay, so let's just scale that in so it's you can you can just about see those edges there, can't you? All right. Okay, lovely. So that's about the size now. It's much too tall. So let's just, just bring that on the Z there, and we'll just scale that in. Right, there's a point being that this isn't this isn't going to move. It's going to be the same colorish as this. Now, arguably, maybe I should be, um, I should have put this into the base itself as well. Or maybe have a few different bases. Maybe a square or a, a cylinder one. But oh well, oh well. Let's go with this for now. So what I'll do, just to get me started. So let's just rename this as well. Let's just rename this to turret stand or something like that. Turret 
stand. I mean, we've got a turret base, but let's just call it turret stand. And um, we will go to the back. It really matters where we go. Just press two to go into edge select, and we'll mark that mark seam on that one. All right, and we will um, also tab in tab out, and then go into UV edit. Actually, while we're at it, let's just do shade smooth. So it's nice and smooth there. We also need to create a little inset, don't we? So I'm going to press E S. I did an edge loop there as well. In fact, let me just cancel that out a couple. I did alt left alt left click to select that row there, and then uh, e s to create a little inset there okay i don't think we need to worry because the, we'll make sure that the turret sits inside there so we don't need a face or anything to, to block that off all right so i guess we're going to need a um a uh a what's it called a, a seam there as well there we go all right so that's our that's our model <laughs> that's our first object of the day so let's just make this a, a green of some sort so let's um quickly go to uv editing we'll uh we'll press tab and do our also we should just what we should do as well just is, is not have unnecessary space being used so I'll just tab back out and then Z to go into wireframe uh, 1 B just grab that lot I think it was already grabbed we'll just grab that down a bit okay so we just want that just literally just tucked inside there's no point in wasting space that nobody's gonna see you might as well use that it's just practice I don't think it matters too much here so let's go into solid mood there and we'll just also I've noticed that that because we've done shade smooth uh, right click shade smooth again though look I need to get the I mean, screencast keys going you couldn't see that right so I've done shade smooth so if I just shade right click shade smooth so let's just get the normals and say auto smooth there and I'll just make the sharp edges on those bits lovely um, good so we'll, let's just click in and we'll press a u unwrap now this is good but I forgot to mention something yet last time that might be a little bit useful is that let's say we wanted these to be nice and straight we wanted these to be a straight line now I know they are bent around a curve but potentially for easier texturing we might want these to be straight and this is actually not too difficult to do what we can do is if we go into the uh, UV editor here the UV uh, image editor on this side just press 2 to select somewhere in the center of, of the image and we'll just press SY0 on that horizontal there and press enter if we click on the one above it that's fine and if we press shift F shift R that will repeat what I've just done so that will also scale those on the zero so you can see now basically they're flat and let's do the same with the x-axis, so we'll SX0, enter, and again Shift R. Okay, so we've got here now a nice rectangular shape. So if I just press 3 to go into face mode, select that face, then press L, which will, will, which will select all of the others. But this is kind of, if you like, this becomes the key sort of first face. Now if I just right click and say follow active quads, look what happens. We've turned our mesh, our, our, our UV unwrap, into a nice grid uh, with horizontal and vertical lines nice clean vertical lines so that might make for easier texturing so I'm going to go with that for now and then I'm going to just um, just click you as well I don't know uh, let's just press 4 so we've got a island select and just grab that in there now at the moment this is much too big and maybe we don't really care but let's just create a uh, texture for it so let's go to texture paint no doubt I'll have to switch on screencast keys this is going to become a common theme isn't it choo -choo. Uh, uh, there we go right and if I click on texture slots there's no textures so let's just click plus uh, base color and we'll call it turret stand base color I never know whether to use OR or OUR I'm from the UK so that's how we spell color so I'm just gonna go with that for now in fact let's just in fact just for ultimate speed let's just pick a color um, that was something like the green we had here. I don't think that's going to be too bright. So what we'll do, okay, and if we just click over here, what we can do, rather than mucking about, if I just go to my color palette, color palette, click on new, and what we'll do is we'll press S, we're still in texture paint mode, we'll press S, and we'll just find a color like that, and it's added it to our color palette, and it'll, it changes back, which is kind of weird, but there we go. So let's just click it, so it goes to that color, and if we go to the fill tool over here, if we just press Click that. Excuse me. <laughs> I went back to that color, did it again? Thank you very much. Oh, it's because I was in, the fill tool had a different color selected, didn't it? If I just click on that there, that's a little on the dark side, would you say? I don't mean Darth Vader dark side. It's also a little bit on the small side. Um, let's just lighten that up a bit. We'll just keep trying. 
that's looking a bit better that's looking a bit more like it isn't it I just lined it up a bit just to make it look a bit more like that I'm going with that guys now I know I appreciate that's a very basic rough stand I'm not going to I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one um, what I will do though is go back into layout and just click it and just scale it out a bit yeah to about there it's still a bit underneath isn't it but oh well and remember when you do those sorts of things just press Control a rotation and scale okay okay that's our turret stand we like we like we like it's close enough I mean when you actually go to view that in uh, unity it will look uh, it'll look all right it'll look fine it looks very very clean doesn't it that's the thing you might want to dirty that up so speaking about color and textures now I mugged around for ages I think I've got a reasonable looking turret I say reasonable not great reasonable but what I didn't like was I couldn't find a colour that seemed to contrast correctly with this stand. I was try I tried green and that looked too, uh, well, basically too green. It looked like one big unit, which didn't look great. I tried grey, sort of silvery grey. Again, that didn't seem to contrast very well. So I've spent the day for you guys looking at uh, uh, kind of sort of textures and colours and the way the way uh, colour palettes work. And I found this rather well. I, rather brilliant I think this is extremely brilliant for something that's free from Adobe here which is like a color palette uh, wheel tool and if you excuse me having a cup of tea here my my throat's a bit sore I've been running and I, I breathe in too hard <laughs> if you um, have a color it what it'll do you have got a, a, a series of options here and I won't go into too much detail. I'm, if you're interested let me know and I'll put some links in but what it'll do is it'll say some colors nearby that uh, you may want to use, where the kind of the saturation or the hue has been changed. Yeah, I'm going to get I'm going to get the wrong terminology now here. Or you can go monochromatic, which is basically, I believe, different um, lightness and shades of the same color. You've got this thing called a triad, which gives you sort of a, a harmonic colors. I think they call them harmonic colors. Uh, so possible options to say, you know, if you're choosing green, this is the little white line there is the actual kind of key color. So if I just spin that over to the sort of green that we're using. You can see, see it's suggesting a purple and a couple of browns there. Now, I don't know why it's got a couple there. I get a bit confused about that, but it's kind of got two shades of the same brown. So potentially, what we could do is we could, using this color here, perhaps we could try using purple, perhaps with the side pieces and maybe the gun, the actual gun barrel being this brown color. What do you think? The good news is it gives them to us here as well so we can just key those ones in so what I'll do to start with just to get the, actually the color of this bit here if I just click on here um, click over here go to texture paint right and if I now find that color I guess I'm going to, have to do S to sample click it there we go and it's added it here and if I just click on that and then click here it tells me it's 35 7f 2f right so hopefully the world's a kind place so I can key this in here press enter and what it's done is you now it's given me I say the opposing colors now I actually think that's a little on the light side um, but let's go with it okay um, maybe dark, darken it up a touch but first of all let's just create the uh, turret itself and start making it look interesting but these maybe these are the colors we're gonna go for so I'm thinking we're gonna go for purple and one of maybe this darker brown for everything else all right and what we'll do is we'll use shades of those colors as well just to really mix it up I don't know if this is gonna work guys we're going on a journey all right so first of all let's go back to our layout yeah escape you there okay go to our layout and we will add our new cylinder our turret all right so let's just again let's make we're in the center here let's press shift a mesh cylinder and it's defaulted to the same vertices 16 okay with no cap fill so if you if, if there wasn't that before if you didn't change that you can just click on down here and just set that to 16 I think 16 is a good number it's good enough to get away with certainly from any sort of half decent distance if you've got uh, if if uh, you know, polygon count is no issue then you can certainly um, go that to 32 okay so I should definitely check that I am recording so apologies uh, I am recording there we go 15 minutes in right so let's go up and just grab that up there on the Z so we want to be just above there don't we and then scale it down G on the Z and I'm just gonna line it up that that bothers me <laughs> I guess maybe if I go to edit mode yeah they're showing them but if you go into object mode it doesn't show the, uh, the caps I need it to be in um, object mode because I want to see the 
origin point. I don't see that disappear on me. Okay, and just G on the Z. There we go. We're looking, we're looking pretty close now. Scale it in a touch more, maybe. We want to make sure that that, that, that bit there, that rim is, is showing. That's lovely. We can scale it in a touch more, can't we? Look, and get away with it. Okay. And now we've got to think about a rough height. That, to me, actually, so let's have a think, maybe a touch higher. So if we just go into um, edit mode with tab. Again, I'm going to have to turn screencast keys on and off. Okay, and then, if we, and then we just press Z to go into, uh, uh, what do you call it, render mode. Uh, we'll go to wireframe, Alt A to select nothing, and then just select those ones, and we'll just grab it on the Z, maybe to there. I'd like out a way, like ZZ, Z, or press something like that, where you press it twice and it will go into, um, switch between solid and wireframe. Maybe there's a way to do that. Maybe there's a way. <laughs> yeah. So let's think about this. Do we want to do we want to make the turret a little bit shorter at the top like that? No, because it starts to look like a plinth then, doesn't it? I'm going to keep that as it is. What I'll probably do is do an ES like I did before. And then maybe an E on the Z and then press F to create a face. I know that's not I know that's not what we're after right now, but let's just have a think about how that looks. I'm going with it guys, I'm going with it for now. Okay, we'll right click and do Shade Smooth. And then we need to go over to our object, uh, 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 what is this What is this tab? The Object Data tab and we'll click on Normals and Auto Smooth to make sure that any sharp angles still get shown up. Pretty standard workflow, right? So we're looking okay there. Um, let's While we're at it, let's just start adding some uh, edge loops. So let's do that right now. Now, one of the things I noticed before was it's very difficult to mark these edges here um, because of the angle you get quite a lot of drift so what I'm going to try is I'm not going to um, uh, do a seam let's just press 2 there and there I'm not going to do that seam there okay I'm just going to remove that one I, uh, just go for that one control E mark seam and then I'm going to be a really annoying and do every single one of these it's going to take a bit of time maybe circle select would be easier Okay, but let's just go with it. And what I'm thinking, you see, it's going to do Control E, Mark Seam. I'm hoping it's quickly going to UV editing. Whatever, I'm still showing that one, is it? Okay, A there, and we just press U, unwrap. Um, that's suggesting that it has got a cap at the bottom, which it has not. Oh, hang on, so let's just sorry. And also, let's just press L, and then just the seam sorry and now we'll do u unwrap something bizarre is going on isn't it oh i'll probably need to do one yes i'll probably need to do one somewhere as well so let's press control one to go to the back and press control e mark seam there sorry and now we we'll do uh, no not a l u unwrap there we go okay can you see what i've done there now what i'm thinking is rather than mark the uh, edging on there i'll do it in here I'll do a line straight down in the text. Uh, so I like that, I think. It does mean that this bit here is going to paint a bit weird because you can see there's gaps between each one. Maybe, not sure. And again, I think I'll do the same thing here. I'll just do the same thing. Perhaps I should have done, no, no, I shouldn't because that, that'll do edge loops. So I'll just keep going around here. I've, I know I've marked that. Let's not mark it. So I know I've marked that one, but I'm going to be marking it as seam anyway. So I was going to ignore it, but uh huh, uh huh. I'll be interested to see how this unwraps actually, because this is straight down. Okay, Control E, Mark Seam, L, U, unwrap. Okay, and you can see that's unwrap. So again, I'm gonna, uh, I can't want this one, can I? Because it's a circle. Maybe I can, just, I can do it around here on the on the object. All right, just A, U, unwrap. All right, uh, we'll we'll work on that later on. Right, so we've got ourselves. Our first two uh, seams marked. It's, I think it's quite a good idea. A lot of people do this at the end, and I think that's probably why they get bored and do a smart UV project, which is why they end up, um, you know, perhaps not doing it as efficiently as they could. Maybe it's just worth doing on the go. I actually quite like unwrapping. I think I'm a bit of a, a bit of a rare one in that regard. Right. So first thing I want to do is add the gun. So let's just have another thing. Let's go to the front view, and what I'll actually do is I'll click on this edge here and press Shift S and cursor to select it, and that will put the cursor in between basically the center point of my selected uh, object, vertex, whatever. Right now, now if I just press Shift-A, cylinder, this is going to be our gun. Now the question to ask is how many verts should we have? We could try 12. That's more than enough. I found 8 is a little bit too blocky. 
So let's just rotate that X 90. Again, I'm going to get screencast keys on. Okay, we'll just start scaling this down. Gee, in fact, I really need to be in layout mode here, don't I? Get to layout mode. And just again, I think I'm just going to keep pressing that. Um, have a little button that's pressing, uh, that presses uh, screencast keys from which right. Oh, no, sorry, excuse me, tab in and then L scale. I'm just going to try and find a decent size for this. I think that's way too big at the minute. Yeah, I think that's that looks okay. Obviously, scale it on the Y. So the question is, how big G on the Y? How big do we want this to be? Uh, don't worry, it looks a little bit uh, Mickey Mouse at the minute. I think I can improve on that. Let's just maybe bring that out a bit so it doesn't. Oh, G on the Y. Let's go as far as we dare. Okay. So and also, obviously, let's just go into object mode, shade smooth. Not sure why. Okay, let's just double check there. Let's try 35 there. There we go. See some because because I've used less vertices on this, it didn't quite uh, consider it to be smooth. Right, so that's looking a bit like a I don't know, like a, a six-year-old did it. <laughs> so let's try and make it look like a 12-year-old did it, shall we? Uh, the, so what we'll do as well is we're going to shift A and we're going to admit, no, sorry, go into edit mode. Shift A, cube. Okay, and we'll just scale this down. Which what we're basically doing is we're getting to put it in here in the middle okay and we'll just grab that on the Y one thing I should probably do while I'm at it is press 3 X faces there just L G X uh, Y sorry okay and that looks kind of daft but don't worry I think if once I've added some bevels to it I think we'll be in a better place let's press 2 get those four edges there and bevel them and then what I might do as well is I might just grab that edge loop there and just scale it in okay that looks a little bit more sensible doesn't it and now what I can also do tab in if just do control R here and then um, scale on the Y Hang on, <laughs> scale on the Y. I just cancelled that because I think I might have gone over myself. And G on the Y, and just pull it into the middle there. In fact, sorry to go on. Let's just grab the whole thing on the Y because you can see there's unused space there. So let's just let's just pull that L G Y like that. Just so we're using, we're not wasting any space. All right, that's that's the point here. I don't want to waste any texture space. It's just good practice. There's very little real difference in terms of what I just did there. So I'm just going to GG, pull that up, no, GY then. Um, GG, but I, I thought pulled them along their axis, but it looks like if I do GG with two of them, it does this rather weird spanning out. So let's just do G on the Y. Okay, and then we'll try G on the Y, so we'll get it centered roughly. I'll press 3. Yep, and then we'll press E, S. No, we won't. We'll go to face mode. Do an edge move around there and now E and then S. Okay, and then just scale it on the Y to give ourselves something like that. There we go, and just press 2. Get that edge there, close it in a bit. There we go, that's looking quite handy, isn't it? E, S to make that one, and then E, Y to pull it in. And then F to make a face there. That's hey, that doesn't look that doesn't look too bad now, does it? You see, the one thing I found about sci-fi stuff is have a look at what you like about each piece. Go and look at reference images. Go and see what you know. Kind of makes you think. Oh, I really like the way that looks. And then and then take that and, and put it onto your put it onto your turret. Yeah. And what you don't like, chuck away. I mean, I don't think I like this hat bit at the top, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Right. So that's that's great, but it still looks a bit bit meh. So let's try and add some extra bits to it. And this is the other thing I found. I think the more you add to a turret, the better it looks. So let's do a um, another cube. Shift A mesh cube. And I'm going to just scale that out. I'm going to grab it over here. Just grab it and try and get it into the center here. Okay, we're going to do another little trick here. I'm going to show you a cool trick with what we're going to do with arrays. I'm going to get that to a reasonable size. Quickly tab into edit mode. What I hadn't realized is that I've actually kept it as a separate object. So I must have been in object mode at the time. So what I can do is I can press, I can select the cube and then shift select the uh, turret, which I need to rename, don't I? And I'll press control J. 
Okay, whatever you select last is the kind of will be the root object if you like the parent. Okay, and let's just rename this as well to turret. So we've got that in there, right? And now if I click on tab, that's part of the same object, which is what I wanted. I'll press three and then X to delete faces there. Alright. I'm conscious, like I mentioned earlier on, that maybe I should start unwrapping some of this stuff. Click that, press L. In fact, what I might do, I'll, just, I'll do it here now and then move it across later. So let's just G that on the on the X, make it a bit bigger. I think what I'm trying to say here, I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of edge loops, scale them on the X, pretty tight, and do basically what I did here. So let's press three, and then E S. But now what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to just do it. Press let's try it. No, no, let's just press selecting the whole box and just do Control B. No, so I don't want. Don't want those edges to be internal edges there to be to be mucked about with. But let's just try it with this face here. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That'll do. That'll do for what I'm trying to say here. Now it might be a bit big. L G X. I'll pull that in. All right. Too big? Let's go in. G X. L G X. Okay. So we've got one there, and I think we should have one on the other side. So what we can do? There's a couple of th a couple of ways we could do this. Actually, we could just mirror it and just put it across roughly. But what I would like to do is uh, use the mirror um, function. Okay, but it's not going to work out of the box. If I just select that one, just press Control uh, M, and then X, it'll flip that that object for me there. Okay, that's a good start. We know how to reverse it, but it's kept it in the same place. So I can press Shift D. That'll create a duplicate of that object there, and I'll right and I'll right click to cancel. And again, if I press Control M, X, that will uh, reverse it. But again, it's on the wrong it's on the wrong axis. So if we just grab that. It's still there. So let's just um, X that and. Uh, delete the vertices so we're still left with this one what we can do is change our pivot point and if I click up here and, and make the pivot point the 3d cursor and just to be absolutely sure you should make sure you should press shift s and cursor to world origin yeah so that when you scale when you mirror on the x-axis now it's gonna basically if I just zoom out it's gonna mirror X across there now if you can see that it's right down there so really I mean it should be here-ish but it doesn't matter because we're going on the x-axis this 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 horizontal so we should be in good shape here let's just give it a go okay uh, I'm conscious that I probably should unwrap this first could do a quick unwrap couldn't I uh, helps if you're in edge select mode control E mark seam What I'll do is I'll do one along there. Control E, mark seam. Get rid of that. Uh, sorry, that. Control E, clear seam. I don't think that's going to uh, unwrap as well as I might like. So quickly go UV layout. View unwrap. That's a bit bit messy, isn't it? Um, not terrible though. <laughs> we could do that follow active quads thing, uh, which might make it look a bit better. Um, Shall we? Should we do it? Have we got time? Come on then, let's quickly do this. I will, uh, so, so 2, so S, Y, 0, enter, shift R, and then S, X, 0, shift R, and then we'll go to face mode, that, L, for like two quads. There we go, <laughs> isn't that magic? Isn't that magic? I mean, I, I could straighten these up, but I'm not that worried. Right, so by doing that now, it means that when I mirror it, they'll share the same uh, texture space. All right, so we can we just got to keep an eye out for these things. So I might just a and grab those and just put those out of the way because they'll need scaling because they're much too big at the minute. Right, uh, compared to everything else. Right, so now what we're going to do? Remember, we've clicked over here and we've clicked, we've made the um, pivot point the 3D cursor. So I'm going to press N, get rid of that. Press Shift D. You see it's created a new a duplicate object. I'm going to right click so it stays where it is. And now watch this. Control M X Enter. How about that? How about that for some magic? 
Do you not think? Oh, I think that's great. <laughs> All right, so we've got ourselves a reasonable turret looking thing there. Now, I think it needs something along here. It just looks a little bit boring. So let's just tab back in. And I've realized probably what one might do really well is something like a, a kind of a another loop in here. But that's going to mess up our unwrap, isn't it? Let's have a quick think about that. Uh, and let's just right click there and then we'll just grab those two. Scale it on the Z. Ah, you can see what's happened. Because my pivot point is now at the bottom, it's actually scaling. I was expecting it to scale in between the two uh, horizontal lines, but it hasn't because we've changed our pivot point. So let's quickly change that back to, um, I think it's the individual origins. Let's just try that. Scale on the Z. No, sorry, it's the medium point. Scale on the Z. There we go. Now that, that that's the medium point between the two. That's much better. Press 3 for face mode. And then ES. Usual rules apply. How's that looking? Right, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm not going to go too much further. I think what I might quickly do, just to make life unwrapping easier for me, is just click on that one and that one, and scale on the Z there as well, so they're nicely out. Okay, that looks pretty good, and I think I might just... Just, shall I? Just, or shall I not just? Yeah, come on. Let's make those edge loops as well. Uh, seams as well. Yeah. Okay. And one more thing I might just do is I might just add something on the top here just as for a different colour or something like that, another cube. So let's just, again, press 3 and then Shift S. Cursor selected. Pops it in there. We'll add a cube. Shift A, cube. I'm just going to scale it right down, I'm quickly go to face mode, press 3 and then click that and just X that face there, not going to be used, uh, L, scale down, grab on the Z, let's have a quick look, again we need to, I was never, I was nothing anything that big, scale on the Z, something like that, I might just bevel the top and then grab on the Z until it goes under, select the top edge and bevel, control B. Yeah, I think that's. You get the idea. You can add more and more bits as as you go. Let me find some images to show you some examples. One second. Yeah, so here you go. So here's a load of uh, of turret examples. You can see them. We'll add some. By the way, we'll add some uh, some normals in a minute. So we'll we'll add some other bits as well as we go. Um, but you can see the more sort of chunks and pieces and bits that you add, and you'll notice as well if I just pick on one. They're usually beveled in some angles. If, uh, science fiction seems to love 45 degrees, uh, so or sometimes like 30 degree angles, um, and insets and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you can just follow these guidelines, have a look, have a look around, find stuff that you like the look of. Okay. So let's have a look at our turret. It looks a little bit pale in comparison. I would like to make these guys actually L and L. Oh, a bit bigger. First of all, let's scale them on the Y make them bigger that way. Yeah. That's for free, isn't it? Let's just make sure they're still roughly centered and they are. That's good. Um we scale on the Z as well. Yeah, just to give them something that looks like. I mean, <laughs> if those were ears and that was his nose, you could stick a couple of eyes there, couldn't you? But <laughs> let's uh, let's keep with that. Okay, so we I like this. I like what we've done. All right. Now let's um Tab into edit mode. I've not unwrapped this piece here, so let's uh, not marked it as the seams on this piece here. So let's do that. Um, yeah, Control E, mark seam. I'm going to have to pick a seam there. Control E, mark seam. That's fine. I could potentially do all four of these, but it's pretty flat actually. If I just on the Z, that'll unwrap just fine. Yeah, that'll unwrap just fine. Okay, this bit here needed unwrapping, didn't it? So let's just, that should be easy as well, actually. So just press 2, Control E, Mark Seam around there, and just pick an underside edge here. Control E, Mark Seam, good times. Um, let's give it a quick go. A, U, oh, I haven't done the gun, look. Let's just press L here, and then press Shift H, and that'll hide everything else, so we can actually isolate it a little bit. Hopefully there's no corner at the back there. There's not. Now, let's just try one thing. Let's get screencast keys on. 
I don't know why I'm bothering with screencast keys anymore. Okay, we'll, we'll select those two edges there. Control E, mark seam. Now we don't have to go mad on the inside. But let's pick a seam at the top so no one ever sees it. And that back face there. All right. Um, I'm tempted you see this A U unwrap. That's not going to work well on this. We need to put a seam down the back here. So I'm going to press that one and then Control Left click to select all of those. Hang on, is that the, is that the underside? Ugh. <laughs> what have I done there? I think that's the. I think that's the. Yes, that is the one on the bottom. So let's press Control E, mark seam. Let's press A U unwrap. No, ah, I think it's done it. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I think I might do some follow active quads on some of these guys. All right, but that looks okay. So let's just press Alt H to bring everything back. A if everything wasn't pressed. So if I pressed it twice, I just be sure and unwrap. Okay. So what I might do is, is click on some of these things and just have a little look around and see how if there's space that can be can be saved. Like for instance, let's grab that. Uh, press four. Let's grab that. Look, that can go in there. That could probably fit in there as well, no problem. Yeah, just grab these guys. You see, we're we're doing quite well here already. Um, Probably grab that whole thing, could I, and put it in there? Oh, I can zoom in. Yeah, oh, yeah, look, it'll be easy. There. You can go in there as well. I don't think you guys are going to move. What was I saying about... Uh, that's that's the gun, you see. I could I could go for that follow active quads, but I'm not sure I could. Actually, now I think about it, I think that one there is a face, isn't it? I think it is, so we can't... Um, isn't that showing faces? By the way, this is important by the way. So if I just select these guys, now I think I can select individual for us three and do that. I think I can find the face. There you go. This is this is a big button. This should be on by default for me. Uh UV face selection mode. Um yeah, so I can see now that that face is there. So that's that's helpful and that tells me that in fact if I can't I can't actually put anything in here. Oh four. Why is that separate? Let's see what bit that is. Why is that actually just separated? Why is it separate? There's no, there's no. Uh... Well, that's curious, isn't it? It's not because of that, is it? Oh, so there are. That's interesting. So you can select faces and move them completely. That's a risque. Okay, so maybe we can still squeeze some more space here, though. I kind of feel that we can do a little bit better. Um, I just scale this down a touch. I mean, I know this is a uh, kind of th theoretical. Again, scale those down like that. Uh, grab you, put you there. Maybe the idea is I'm going to try and get enough space there. This is an annoying one, isn't it? Okay, let's just click that on. A, Alt A rather. Excuse me. Let's click on there. Uh, press L. So that's that edge there, is it? Hmm. <laughs> tempted. I'm tempted to scale that down. Just temporarily. Bear with me. GY. I'll be scaling it up again in a second anyway. Okay, grab that there. Uh, four. Come on, people. That's because this thing's on, isn't it? That's dangerous times. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we can just select them all, grab them, and scale them back up again. Yeah. I like this bit. <laughs> right, let's quickly save our file as well. Control S. We haven't saved it yet. That's very dangerous, isn't it? We'll call it to turret. I call it turret, and there's already one called turret, although I didn't like it. You know, I better call it something else, no, turret 4. Okay. And we've got ourselves our, our mesh unwrapped, ready to begin texturing. Alright, so let's let's take a chance. 
and back sorry back to our color wheel let's take a chance on using this purple here okay and then we'll go I'm thinking slightly darker so let's go into a uh, texture paint okay as usual let's just I'll just turn off screencast keys and back on again look at that bright green there shocking okay we're gonna click new material base color so we'll call it turret base color right? color mm. I think for the sake of keeping it you know honest we'll do 2048 by 2048 here okay and let's go back here and we'll just double click that back to here oh too late <laughs> that's okay though because we'll just click on this by the way well I clicked on here by the way and I clicked on hex if it wasn't if that wasn't obvious I think it defaults to this one but you can click on hex and you can key in the value then control V enter all right and if I just plus that and then I'll go back to fill which is there which is good and I'll just click on it okay we've got this uh, shocking looking uh, <laughs> do you know what I actually don't think that's actually too bad I mean obviously we need to get some more colors obviously but actually that does contrast rather well so that's called the triadic uh, harmony yeah so that's worth thinking about so if you've got a color pick a color work on the uh, uh, monochromatic kind of near ones nearby when you're working on that image but if you want to work on something else try triadic try triadic right but we're a long way there in fact I'm half tempted just to go into edit mode and um, just start pressing L, um, Alt A then just the things we want to paint that color so I'm thinking those bits, those bits, those bits, those bits, and those bits, right? And now I tab back out. If I just click on this little box here and click it. So now you've got, excuse me, what has it done those ones? Who's Shift L? Yes, I can. And then we'll do Control Z first, haven't we? Okay, and then we'll go to tab. I thought I did just these ones L, 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 L. <laughs> Probably the underside one as well. Oh, there we go. Okay, now tab back out. Click that bad boy. Okay, good. Right, so what we need to do is we need to actually texture this now. That's just that's a lovely colour and everything, but we want to um that's turret base colour, yeah, that's good. We want to to kind of add that kind of this mottled effect that we used here. Now this can be a little bit more tricky because we've got uh these pieces. But we're gonna have to try it. We'll go with it. Uh, this is again. This is something that perhaps we could do over here. I'm going to add some of those. Try adding those lines over here. Let's give it a go. So I'm going to go in now and pick myself a colour that's perhaps a touch darker. In fact, why don't we use um? Why don't we use Adobe? So let's click on here. Control C. Let's back over here. And what we'll do under the, under the monochromatic, I'm going to select the middle colour. I'm going to put in Control V there. So these are the colors we're going to use okay these are the colors we're going to mix with so I'm going to get my tablet which I hope is working for me today and switch it on have a small cry if I have to go and get the cable no there we go it's working okay so this is the color we went for let's go for a um, this one that looks quite strong I'm going to try with yeah let's try with the lighter one first a a d a 7 d 9 well let's just copy it shall we Go back over here. Enter. Add it to the palette. I think I need to go over to here. I think it'll just change the colour for me, but that's okay. Right, that's a very bright colour. So I think we need to keep the strength of this right down. Kick it right down. We don't want to be going too crazy on this one, do we? So let's have a quick play. See how we look. I've got it in mixed mode. I'm, I've been trying to find best kind of smooth fall off let's just have a look what fall we've got this fall off at the minute you see but the problem we have well first of all it's way too uh, way too weak let's make sure it's working yeah it is working that's down the strength yeah there we go in fact you can see it up here it looks quite nice doesn't it yeah um, I've got pressure in engage yes we we'll try a few fall offs what was the, one, the diagonal one? That one. I might just try this just to see. There's not that much difference between that one and that one, to be honest with you. Look, you can see 
but let's just try this one see how we get on so I'm going to go around just texturing the good news is if it will actually texture underneath oh if it wasn't obvious by the way I've got this on so it's only going to texture the bits that I had selected so let's just go around and just lighten this up we're deliberately kind of not making it a great job because we're going to go around in a minute and add another colour might just zoom in a touch just to oh the other thing I can do by the way sorry excuse me I should have done this before if I click on here, viewport shading, I want to do texture and I want to do flat. That gives me, I mean, it does look rather shocking. Let's press N there to get rid of you. But it does give me an honest view of how this thing looks, and I like this. Apologies for not mentioning that last time. This is a lot more clear to me. Okay. I need to work out a button that I can do that with. In fact, it's shift and middle mouse, isn't it? I'll reassign that one second. Okay, I think that's working for me. Sorry, apologies. I, have to, I get nervous now. I have to make sure I am recording. There we go. Yes, yeah, so I've got a button now that I can now uh, press and, and drag around so I don't have to keep moving over to my mouse again. Okay, so this looks horrifying, doesn't it? But don't worry. Bear in mind, we are in a very flat mode here. Noticing a seam there, am I? Or is that just a? Is that just because of the flat mode? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm just laying this down. I might have to do some smudging in a minute. You can see. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to do it over here as well. This is this one thing I do like about Blender. You can go through. Look at these bits. <clears throat> no, that's too much. Too much. I've overcooked it. Don't panic, Richard. So it's quite nice here. That looks a little bit too strong. Maybe. Don't know. It doesn't matter too much. So we are trying to create a. Um... Yeah. So we need to go into smear mode just to get rid of some of these bits here. Let's, let's remove those seams. Okay. So that's good. So let's go to our next color over to here. So that was the color we just did. Now, if we go for a much darker one like this one. Okay, and then we'll uh, go to our paintbrush, which is where it's gone. Where'd it go? Oh, it's because I'm in smear mode. <laughs> How many times have I made that mistake, guys? Okay, click on that, click on that, click on that. Enter, add it. So I'm really following Adobe here. <laughs> blame Adobe if it looks crap. No, I don't think you can blame them for that, can you? Um, okay, so let's just now again. Let's just let's just see. What are we talking here? I don't know. For me, that it's not making a huge amount of difference. Probably because I've got the strength on quite low, not that low. So I'm just going to add this one now as a final layer. All right. Maybe I should have done this in a different order, but something weird is going on slightly with the. Uh... I've not got symmetry on, have I? No. Okay. Oh well. Feel free to fast forward these little bits if you like. I won't be offended. Um, I'm just going to try and even this out a little bit using these colours. And I'll, what I might do is I might just go through as well and um, uh, sort those seams out again. Don't feel you have to watch all that. So this bit here is quite dark, isn't it? So I've done something wrong there, I think. Let's just let's just t tidy this up and make it doesn't matter too much. Sometimes it's good to have a little bit of variation, I think. It has a bit of distinction when it's turning. How are we looking? That's okay. I might just just lighten that up a bit there, look I'm thinking. Okay. I'll under here, look, we need to do some work. Sorry. Are there anyone's going to see it or not? Let's quickly go to layout mode. 
click on the um, this and do hide. In fact, we didn't need to do that. We could have just gone over to the. Uh, in fact, we can do the same. Now we're here with the turret stand. If you just click the eye, it'll just hide stuff. There we go. Let's see better what we're doing now. Oh, what? Oh, I'm still in. I'm texture painting. Da, 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 to cut that out. Why have I gone into object mode? Texture paint, please. Texture paint. I probably haven't got anything selected, have I? There we go. Well, these things could catch you out, couldn't they? Okay, I am relatively happy with that. I might think about changing that bit there. Just lightening this up, or maybe just maybe just softening this. Let's just go with a soften brush. Yeah, soften brush here. Just you can yeah. you can use the soften brush, but it seems to be quite difficult to master. Maybe it's not very good for these sorts of things. Maybe it's get a bit of a much more harsh edges. Maybe the smear brush might be our friend here. Let's, I'm gonna, only going to look for the uh, the seams now, and just un. Uh, Make them look a little less brutal. Okay. Oh, there's a nasty one there. Look, just, just, I'm just clicking and dragging. I don't know if these are seams or uh, just because it's in flat mode. Okay, so I'm going with that. So let's talk about these side pieces. Let's have a think about the colours we're going to go with. Um, if we have a look at our, our. Uh, Oh, so we've changed the colours on here, so we can't know right now. So let's get, go back to the original purple that we were using, which was this one. So we just click on that, and then go back to our colour scheme here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm wrong. It's the original green we used, wasn't it? Which was um, that one. Which is this, because that's the that will show us the three colours, won't it? So I just click on that, paste that in, enter, All right, and then I'll do the triad. Yeah, you see, so we've gone for that purple now, so it's just looking like a, like a brownie colour. So let's do the top and the sides with that, like that brown, and we'll do the gun. So we'll do the top. No, we'll just do that bit there with the brown and that bit brown and we'll do the gun and the size with that orange. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so let's do um tab into edit yeah we've done that, escape that. Go away. <laughs> um so let's go into uh paint. We're gonna go with this one aren't we? Control C back here, click here, click there, control V, enter, okay, and just add that to the colour palette. We're in the fill mode, so let's just tab into edit mode now, and let's just click that and press L, L. And did we say this top bit as well? I think we did, didn't we? Is that everything that there is? Yeah, okay, so now let's go back, and we will make sure that is right, and we'll click fill. Let's fill those two bits up. What do you think? Obviously it's looking rubbish at the minute because um, it's way too dark. Way too dark. If we just turn off... Uh, texture uh, is it material? So we'll, t we'll turn off uh, studio, is it? Uh oh, which is the normal one? <laughs> Let's just go to uh, that there. Rendered. Um. God, I hope it's not that colour. It doesn't look that colour in the. Uh, in here does it um right okay so let's let's go with it okay let's just keep going okay looks all right there doesn't it go back to here and then we'll just get that color and we'll just line it up add that in and let's start painting for the sake of um i'm not i mean i mean paint fill there we go uh it's gonna need changing there we go and then unless i zoom in a bit do anything? It is, I think. I'm not sure. 
it should be they are selected we're in texture paint let's just yank the strength up just to see now I seem to be in yeah, that are filled against that color so let's click on that one yeah there we go let's darken it up there we go so we've got a bit strong let's yank that down start filling it up here there we go we'll just do this hopefully this will look a lot better once we've added some uh, I think it's going to look very very weird but I'm beyond caring now I'm going to try and okay I'm going to try and see if I can help out with the edges and the tucks and stuff like that right okay there's done let's get this bit done Sorry, I've just seen a smear there. I can't let it pass. Just have to just let those guys work that way through there. Look, there we go. And there. Good old smear tool. <laughs> okay. Still kind of there, isn't it? Oh, no, no. You cut that out. Make it a bit bigger. Okay, right. Okay, so that's the. Not quite. It's not quite the brown stuff, actually. Still the dark brown yet. Let's just do these pieces. Okay, right, and then we will yeah, let's tidy that up. Tidy that up, right? Um, that only leaves the two side bits and the gun, doesn't it? So let's just L L. L, 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 L. Let's get the whole gun in. Okay, and then we'll tab back out, texture paint, click on here. What did we end up saying? It was going to be this one, didn't we? So let's click on there, click over here, control V. Okay, add that to the palette. Let's fill them, it's already there. Okay. I'm not sure. This looks a little bit too contrasting to me. It's supposed to be harmonious, but let's just see. Okay, so we've filled them, and now let's just darken that up considerably. Add plus. That looks a lot like that, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and let's just go back to paint mode. Select that. It's selected. There we go. And let's just start painting through. I think it might be a bit too dark, don't you? Oh, well. Okay, because I've got this mode here selected, it's only, selecting, it's only painting the ones I've So only painting the ones I've got selected. Right. Uh, sorry, I should do something here. Let me just while well, save myself a bit of time. Controls it a bit. I might as well turn symmetry on on the x-axis while I'm doing these ones. I actually thought that I'd um, copied the. Uh... Working. Okay, well, sod you then. <laughs> I'll do it myself. I'm not sure why that's not uh, working on the x-axis. Seems to be drawing on here. What's my pivot point? Turn symmetry off. I'm getting worried now. Let's just go up here and just do a bit of work as well, shall we? Yeah, let's get it done. Well, it's look, it looks somewhat embarrassing, some of these colours, doesn't it? Actually, well, this green here is because it's not as bad as. Uh, as bad as it first looks. Right. Okay. And let's do the gun. The old smudge tool. I think I mucked up something there. I don't know. What's happening here? Okay. Smudge tool's not working, peeps. I'm on the smudge to us, boy. <laughs> there we go. Let's just smudge that in, and then we'll go back to here. Just start painting that in. Let's 
zwei mehr. Sorry, just get the hang of the. So, I think it's fair to say I've yet to find a texture. This has gone badly wrong. Let's get the smudge tool uh, stamp and just start fixing this up. Thank goodness for this tool. This is making it look pretty decent. You'll want to do a lot better job than this. Take your time. I'm going this for the tutorial, but you'll want to go in there as well. And just that's it. I'll, uh, I'll edit that up later on. Hang on. I don't know what that's doing though, that's really rather weird. It's probably something to do with my textures here, I think. Yeah, we can do those inside. I'm not going to worry too much about the inside because no one's ever, ever going to see it. Alright, so... Again, smudging. Smudging and fixing. Let's call it the fix tool. Richard's fix tool. <laughs> right. Um, it's definitely a symmetry on. I get the feeling like it's... If I do something down there, it breaks it over here, looks like that. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Right. Okay. Next job. We haven't finished yet, I'm afraid, with the texturing, is to start working through these edges and sharpening them up. This will make all the difference. This will make stuff pop out a lot more, make it look much more like a sensible turret. Uh, so I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll come in and start doing that. Okay, so... Excuse me, I had a little break there. Um, let's get around to doing this now. You might want to fast forward this. Fact, I may even, um, I may even time lapse it <laughs> uh, because it's so dull. But what we're going to do is we're going to go around. So we need to change this, by the way. Now we're going to change this back to studio. So you see that actually looks a bit better in studio mode, doesn't it? That's not as quite as bad as I thought. So I thought it was looking very Mickey Mouse, and it'll look really good now once once we start. Um, um, added adding the uh, lines around the place. So I'm gonna I'll, let me just start with this one, a couple of them over here, just to get us going. Because I remember I did say that we would try and do the lines down here uh, automatically. Let's see how, if what we can get away with. So I'm gonna go back down. I'll make sure I'm in texture paint mode. Uh, I'm gonna pick a lighter color and then lighten it up a bit more. So we're right by the white. There we go. And just plus that in. Can I drag these? It does. It puts it in. This, it's the same color, isn't it? Fine. Okay. Anyway, click that right. So, um, if I now just press F and make it nice and small, there we go. I can do that. And you know how? Well, maybe you don't know, but if you haven't seen it before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the stroke to line, and I'm going to add a bit of um, jitter. It's a bit of a. It's a bit of a gamble. A bit of a kind of a. a guess. When we we just start fiddling around with the strengths and the jitters until we find something that we like. Uh, See, that's a little bit too wide, so we can lower that down and bring that down. That was quite good, but we'll make the, the font, this, this radius a bit smaller as well, so let's make that uh, 10. That looks pretty good. So now what we can do, I hope, let's just try this, let's click here. Don't be unkind. Hold down the pressure face, alt it will stay on the, on the vertical, and just click that. Guys, I'm very pleased with how that's gone. <laughs> what was I doing this before? Um, I can do something similar, maybe, here. Oh, not, I need to zoom out a bit. Just start doing these. Yeah, this is... Um, this has paid dividends for me. Okay, so it's going to save me a lot. So any sharp edges... Consider unwrapping them in one seam. Sorry, I'm getting nervous. I haven't pressed record on the OBS. Where are you, OBS? Here you are. I am recording. Okay. I think this could be a little bit longer, this, this one, than the last one. Okay, so that's those two there. So these edges here haven't been done. Look, which is going to have to be done by hand. Uh, okay, so let me um, crack on with that.
Um, quick, quick stop. I should tell you one thing. Um, I'm going to mirror this along the X, maybe the Y, just for speed. Just see how close, I, how quickly I can do this thing. And also, let's up the strength. Uh, I wish that was quite so dark, given the other one was so so bright. Yeah, see that this is this is the problem. This is the problem. Stop it. I think I'm gonna have to do it bit by bit. There's no there's no quick way. Apart from maybe unwrapping like I did earlier. I think that's the winner. Get a nice clean seam. This is just that's that's dreadful. Um I could just um use the line brush I guess for each bit. Oh, I'm tempted to. Okay, let's go with the line. <laughs> Sorry guys. They're not anchored. Line. So I'm just gonna do that to there. Yeah, I think this is the way it's going to, have to be. That to there. Luckily for me, because I'm using X and Y, I haven't got much to do. And then that to there. And that'll join those up. Okay. Uh, underneath, same gig. See that angle there? That's going to look pretty rubbish on top. See? Let's try and get it at 45 degrees ish to the screen. Thankfully, X and Y um, symmetry is making life a little a lot easier for me here. I might just do that one again, a little higher, and then this one, something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, it seems a bit missing there. Look, and it's gone over the flipping edge. Something like that. I have to live with that. Uh, any more for any more? Yes, that's. This is the sort of annoying flipping thing that can happen. <laughs> um, quickly smudge tool. Hopefully I can smudge the heck out of this. Um, we'll just make it a feature. Okay. Did I do it for this guy? I did not. I did not do my special. But. Does look rather good. I mean, actually, actually, actually I'm touch small. That's gonna be a touch big. Okay, I'm going the three. Something like that. Yeah, this should be okay. This should be quite straightforward. He says it's going to complete the wrong place. Good old X and Y symmetry saved me there. Right, okay. We are getting there. We are getting there. I just, I'm just going to do the th these edges here. Can I do this? No, not really. I was going to say, can I do it on the, on the image, but I cannot. But again, I should get saved by X and Y symmetry. I don't think I'm going to do those top bits. I'll just do these lines here, though. It 
clumsy. Let's try that. <laughs> so I'm just letting go at the wrong time at the end. Stop it. I think my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. There we go, that'll do. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so now we've got these bits here. Now these bits have got a lot of uh, edges, haven't they? Let's just crack on. Very good, very good. Let's just get some along these edges here. I don't think we need to go to every edge. That's not right. <laughs> I wonder if this might be easier with a mouse, actually. Um, Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. No, no, I've got to do. Oh, look at that! I got a purple bit there that's come through. Um, let's do this one as well. Seeing as we're there. Time. That's the killer in this. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Just that's all of the. Like, oh no, I haven't done the gun, have I? I'm going to leave those bits there, but I will do the front barrel. If I can, find an angle. Yeah, I'll leave the one on the inside. And now we've got to do the thick bits. This is a bit easier. It doesn't quite quite matter so much. So let's do those now. Let's go for a dark colour like that one. Make it a bit bigger. Lower the strength. Start working on the edges here. How am I doing for time, by the way? 1 hour 13. I'm going to try and stop it, get this done by an hour and a half. And then what we'll do is we'll take a break. And in the next episode, I'll just talk about adding the normals and importing into uh, importing into um, Unity. And then we'll crack on with some coding. What's happened? Uh-oh. Okay, my uh, my tablet did its thing. It died on me. Okay, so let's um, let's just start. Oh no, I don't want line anymore. Oh, I don't want line. I want space now. Uh, so we're going to start. We're just going to start mar marking out the uh, the dark areas. And I'm going to do this very quickly. All right, you might want to spend a little bit more time giving it a bit more love. So these are the inner edges. These are the edges that go inwards. And you can see that because I've got x x symmetry on. This isn't taking very long. We've ended up with a nice dark, oh, nice little dark rim around there. We'll just do some around here. So I'm, I, what I might do is I might do the rough edges first, and I'll go around with the sharp edges afterwards. Look at, oh, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that. I don't even know how the hell that happened, but I'm keeping it. <laughs> Maybe you saw that me do that. I don't know keeping it it's a cool symbol wow 
Do you think it means something? Do you think that was an accident? There's all sorts of things going on here. Look, I'll just try and dock you up just to hide the fact that you were there in the first place. I'm keeping you though. What I'll probably do offline is just smudge some of this stuff in so you don't have to watch it. Um, yeah, these boys need smudging. I'm not going to bother with the bottom one. No one's going to see that. Again, you probably should. Just for consistency. That's weird, right? doing it you notice I'm being pretty broad with my strokes here and that is absolutely fine because I will be going through sharply in a minute with the uh, with the tool there we go so that's okay so I'm pretty ha happy I think I've got all of the rough edges I want to block out maybe do this one as well yeah I should definitely do this one You see, it's starting to come together now. Now it's starting to look more like a, a sensible image, not some Mickey Mouse image. The background doesn't help. That bright green makes it look a bit dark, but that was never really used in this, was it? Okay. All right. Much dirty that up as well. So I never, I don't ever remember colouring that bit dirty, but we're gonna do. We're gonna stick with it. We're gonna have it keep it dirty. Keep these bits dirty as well because they're on the insides. Um, all right, so let's now go for a smaller size. Let's go something like, like four, but we'll up the strength to uh, 0.5, something like that. Okay, so now if I go around, I'm going to just start sharpening this up. Maybe even three. Look, <clears throat> okay, maybe zoom in a couple, and I'm just going to go in and add a real. A real edge to these guys. See, so I'm really defining it now. I'm overdoing it to be honest with you. It's because I'm, I'm going too quickly. I should be taking my time, but we can do this. Ooh. How many times to go? Oh, quite a lot, right? Much sharper edges here. And same here. Again, I think I, I think the problem is with the symmetry on the Y. Let's just turn Y symmetry off. It's causing weirdness. In a way, I kind of like it though. So there's my top tip for the day: keep checking your model. The one thing uh, I think I mentioned this last time was that. Um, because you're not using something like GIMP, this is quite destructive. It's hard to go back, or near impossible, in fact. If you if you if you made a mistake, um, I'm going to smudge some of this, um, then you're not going to find it easy to to come back because there's no there's no there's no layers, or at least we haven't done designed this with layers. I might do a separate tutorial that's got layers in it. I'm not sure yet. It's interesting. That's not got any dirt on it. Um, Let's get that dirt in there. I thought I did this one. This is going to be really dirty, this, because this is the barrel. There we go. Let's make it small again. Okay, and uh, tuck into that real edge there. You see, make this look lovely and dirty. Okay, so look, so you can see what I'm doing here. You might want to tidy this up a touch. Um, I've really gone slapdash. It's not actually going to look that bad because because of the. Um, it's quite good to be a little bit liberal with this stuff. It makes it look a little bit more. I mean, that for goodness sakes, what's happened here? <laughs> um, we need some serious smudging here. Even smudging isn't working anymore. Why isn't smudging working? 
A smear, rather. Why are you being such a monkey? Oh. I don't know what's the matter with that piece there. I think that's, I'm going to have to try and work out why. I think it might be facing the wrong... I did do a mirror on it, didn't I? I'll find out what it is and, and fix it. Uh, for now, that's our turret as is. Let's quickly go to layout and alt H. Go to render in some, some form or another. There you go, you can see. See, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, that obviously that purple's looking weird and that green's looking... That green's too light. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll certainly fix that. Um, but actually, I think maybe... I like the contrast between the these these two. That works really well. Um, I'm thinking if we can fix these bits. Actually, maybe that maybe Adobe is right. Maybe Adobe is right. Uh, so guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, apologies, it's taken a little bit longer than I thought it would, and uh, we haven't quite finished yet. We still need to add some normals to it, make it look good, and some repair work. I'll let you know how I did that. But guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. All the best now. Bye bye.